If you've ever wondered how video games create dense environments in a relatively short amount of time, the answer most likely relies on modular assets. Pieces designed to snap together like Legos. They are a simple concept that will save you a lot of time and that's why you should use them. A lot of your favorite games utilize a form of this concept, from pipes, to roofs, to cornices, streets, all the way to entire dungeons and cities. In this video I will talk about the following concepts. Feel free to skip to the time codes if you need. I will make the models in Blender and showcase how you can use them inside of Unity and inside of Unreal Engine. I chose these programs because I'm comfortable with them, but everything I will talk about is relevant to other softwares such as Maya, 3ds Max, etc. I will also sprinkle some good extra tips at the end, so stick around if that sounds interesting. When decorating an environment, we should strategically think of our assets. Not every asset is important. So it's good to think of ways we can spend less time on the generic decoration of our projects so we can allocate more time on what are called the hero assets. One of the many ways we can optimize our workflow is constructing our assets modularly. What do I mean? For example, instead of modeling a building from scratch, it can be broken down into its individual components and assembled to create different facades. I will show you guys how I made this exact example later in the video. The idea can be applied to smaller objects, such as windows. You could create an entire model of it, or you could break it apart into its separate elements. Using this method, you can create variations by mixing and matching the components you have created. How granular you want the modularity to be largely depends on the type of project you are working on, and it varies on a case-by-case -case basis. There is no hard rule or limit to how you should approach it, so plan according to what your project needs. Before jumping into the meat of the video, I want to show you guys what the biggest strength of a workflow like this is, so you can decide for yourself whether to implement it in your projects or not. Let's say we had a building with a cornice. What if we wanted to quickly change its style for a different one? All we would have to do is remodel a variation of these two pieces and then swap them out. I know this example doesn't excite the imagination, so let's jump into Unreal so I can show you a practical situation. This entire scene was decorated with the same two assets I showed you. As you can see, you can get really far with a very small amount of work. The angled cornice doesn't really fit every scenario, but it doesn't look bad either, so it can probably be ignored. If you look for them, you can see these types of shortcuts everywhere in AAA production, so don't worry too much about it. While making the scene I realized I was missing one piece, but it's not an issue. I can either model it, or ignore it by copying and pasting the pieces so they intersect. These are the kind of things that only bother you if you know they exist, but may not be important at all. The small amount of organizing I had to do is vastly outweighed by the benefits of a system like this. There is no need to hyperstructure. It's more important to work on the bare minimum, seeing how far you can get with it, and then expanding on it as time goes on. If you planned every modular asset from the start, imagine how many of these could end up being useless. From inside of Unreal and Unity, I can quickly swap out all of the cornices. This allows me to work on the first draft of the level decoration without having to commit to finalized assets. The goal is to slowly create the environment as the needs and challenges of the project evolve. This style of flexible workflow can be found in the Lean methodology, Iterative Development and Scrum. While the way you structure your work comes down to personal preference and circumstances, I highly suggest looking into these adaptable methods because they are usually better suited for smaller teams and solo developers. The biggest weakness of modular assets is that they can come off as repetitive, but you will probably use this in scenarios where you need assets that are generic by nature, such as doors, windows, coins, streets, and sidewalks. These things also repeat in real life, so if you make sure to apply this technique where it makes sense, you will have no issues. With that out of the way, let's jump into the meat of the tutorial. I will start with the buildings I showed you guys earlier, and finally, I will showcase how we can use these assets instead of Unity and Unreal. With a bit of planning, we can start thinking of our modeling as a general blueprint that we can modify to fit our needs. I'm gonna recreate this Phoenician palace. The first step is observing it and trying to notice the parts that repeat. Instead of maniacally noting what you need to create, you can start by blocking out the shape of what you want and later fill it out with basic modeling. You can assume the size based on people. In this case, there is one on the balcony. But a more reliable method is to do some research and get the official measurements of the object. 
You should make your life easy and modify the size of the building to be an even number. Now that I have my cube, I can block out the balconies. Here is where I start theorizing what I could make modularly. You can use Alt-D to duplicate a linked version of your mesh. When you modify one instance, the duplicates will keep the changes. I'm going to divide my work between the modules and the building itself, always swapping back and forth. As I keep working on this, I realize there are smarter ways I could construct my kit. So I simply delete what doesn't go well and try again. I keep myself flexible and keep the modeling very rudimentary. As time goes on, I add more details to the modules and polish them. I ended up with 21 pieces, which really isn't a lot considering the complexity of a building like this. It took me almost exactly one hour and a half, which is probably what would have taken me to model it as one piece anyway. The additional benefit is that I have now created the modules for assembling Venetian Renaissance buildings. In literally 10 minutes, I mixed the pieces to create a different facade. Obviously, this is not the only way you can construct your kits, but I find this way to be the most flexible and intuitive if you don't have a team behind you. While planning out the measurements, it's important to remember that your models might serve a gameplay purpose if you're making a video game. Doors in games are completely ridiculous, but not many people talk about it. Look at The Last of Us. The doors in that game are so tiny, despite it being a very realistic game. Likewise, windows can be unnaturally big as well. Look at these windows in Dishonored. They're massive because the player needs to be able to pass through them comfortably. Not only the windows, look at this table. Even simple boxes in Counter-Strike are unnaturally big, but I bet you never noticed. Ultimately, it's not about the real-world scale, but more so about the gameplay implications the objects have in your game. If it feels right to the player, then it probably is. When exporting, remember that your game engine of choice will have different X, Y, and Z coordinates than Blender, so make sure to convert them. These are the recommended settings for Unreal Engine and Unity. As soon as your assets are imported into your game engine of choice, you will notice that they will comfortably snap to the grid. You can change the grid settings right here for more control. Some modular pieces you create will have wall parts, but a different idea is to use the prototyping tools inside of the engine to fill the gaps instead. CubeGrid makes this type of workflow extremely easy. If we have a 2x4 piece, we can just select two squares and inset them with one button press. Now our piece will fit perfectly because the size of the grid is the same between the softwares. If you want to rotate your block out, just make sure you're doing it in a way that makes it easy. If you enable rotation snapping, you should be fine. Also try to avoid using corner mode. In Unity, you can use ProBuilder and ProGrids. Make sure to install the package. If you're comfortable with Blender, you will immediately be familiar with how this feels. All of your actions will align to the grid. So all you need to do is make some loop cuts and extrude the face inwards. Again, if you want to rotate your block out, make sure you're using rotation snapping. For the extra tips, I will show you something cool. Going back to the window example from the very beginning of the video, we can make a simple menu that allows us to change the style directly in the editor. Then we can fix interior spaces by creating a shader and randomizing it every time the prefab is copied. This can make the environment look and feel more complex than it really is and it gives artists a lot of control over the decoration. In Unreal, this can be done through blueprints, while in Unity, we will need to make a script. All we are doing is creating a list of our game objects, dividing them by style, and swapping between them as the index of an enumerator changes. Then, the interior materials are randomized within an array of possible rooms. All of the examples I showed you can be found on my donation page for free, so you can play around with them. If you guys are interested in these sorts of shaders for both engines, I can cover them in a future tutorial. I hope these tips have given you some ideas for what you can do. You will find all of my resources in the description, so that if you want, you can achieve the exact same effects as I did. You can download all of the files for free on my donation page. While you're at it, you can also download my Blender pillow add-on and leave a donation if you like. Feel free to check out more of my videos, I'm sure you will find them useful. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something new, and see you all next time.